Hello and welcome to Modelling Misadventures. And really excited today because I'm about to start a new project. So let's have a look. So this is a Ben Buckle Super 60. Now I've had this sitting in the shed for a couple of years actually, but uh, decided it's time to get started on it and put it together. So what do we got? Some instructions. These are the plans. And then in the box, not only have we got the kit, but we've got all the accessories that are needed to actually complete the model. So should be fantastic getting cracking with this. So here's all the hardware. Let's see what we've got. We've got a lovely Enya engine there, which I got from Tim. And then next to that, we've got a fuel filter, fuel tank, exhaust deflector. Over here, we've got receiver battery, receiver and switch, three servos and servo arms. We've got the undercarriage and wheels and tires. Here we've got some control linkages and the rubber bands to fasten the wing on. And I think I might have forgot to mention the propeller. And then in here, looks like a mess, but it's actually all the balsa wood. I have to sort that out and start uh, seeing where that all goes. All right, let's get on with it. So before I could get started, I needed a modeling board to pin the plans out onto. Now I'd used a small cork board before, but it was nowhere near big enough for this particular plane. So I had to think about what I was gonna use. Now I tried to find a cork board, which I know a lot of modelers use, but I just couldn't find one that was the right size or the right thickness. So I came, uh, and came along something completely different, um, which I hope is gonna be okay. So I bought this stuff called acoustic pin board. It's actually a polyester material that can be used as a, a soundproofing board. And it's about a centimeter thick. I've laid it on a piece of hardboard and it does seem to take pins really well. So I'm hoping that that's gonna be a good modeling base, but I guess time will tell. So I've got the plans pinned out on the new board and it's worked really well. They've uh, stuck in nicely and I've covered it in a layer of cellophane to stop the wood from sticking to it when it gets glued. So I'm going to start off on the fuselage halves. This is the exciting bit. From this pile of wood is hopefully going to emerge an aeroplane. Well, that's the first half of the fuselage done. And I've got to say that board that I pinned it out on was absolutely fantastic. I'd recommend it to anybody actually. Easily as good as any wooden work surface or cork board. So now I'm just going to do the whole thing again and build the other side uh, right on top of this one. So we'll see that later. So the fuselage halves are off the plan and I've got to get them apart. Now they're all stuck together. And the instructions say to use a bread knife. So I'm gonna have a go with this, this uh, spatula thing and see if I can prise these open. Well, it's well and truly stuck together. Here we go, it's 
coming. This is the bit when you could really make a mess of it. I mean, the glue stuck the two halves together and you're trying to get them apart and you can just imagine pushing a bit too hard and then the whole thing just splinters and you're back to square one. So yeah, the joys of modeling. And I reckon we've just about got it here, coming to the end. Yes! What a beauty. Now the next part is to make these bits. I've got to lock up this former thing here. And these pieces are designed to hold the fuel tank and they have to have a slot cut out of them in order to take the shape of the particular fuel tank you've got. Now this is the fuel tank I've got and it's rectangular shape, not round. So I'm going to have to cut out a rectangular shape in here in order to take that tank. Now I'm just going to cut out the slots for the fuel tank in these formers. I'm going to use the drill press. And then I'm just going to finish this off with the Dremel tool. Got these two cross pieces in. They've dried overnight. They look pretty good. Now the instructions are not very clear about uh, putting the two halves of these fuselage sides together, but I'm going to do it um, this way with the fuselage upright. Makes more sense to me. Um, so I'm going to put that there and then glue the other side onto it. Well, it was a bit of a mess doing it the way I was trying to do it. So I've actually put it on its side and put the cross pieces in that way. Weighed them down overnight. It's all dry now, so I can carry on with the other cross pieces. Well, I've just done my first cock up with this plane. I had put a wrong piece on. The instructions weren't terribly clear. And I put this piece on the top here. And then I realized it was the wrong one. And it was meant to be in this piece that's flush with the these uh, longer ones. So I had to take it off. Made a bit of a mess getting it off. But I managed to sand it down and get this bit on. And this bit's meant to go on the bottom of the plane, not on the top. So a bit of a cock up there, but nothing that a bit of sanding won't cure. I moved outside now because I've got to use some epoxy glue and Sarah doesn't like the smell of it. So I've glued these front engine bearers on with epoxy. And now we're gonna put these little side pieces on. Again, it's gotta be glued on with uh, epoxy, not wood glue. I can use wood glue again for this next bit. So that's the first part of the fuselage complete. Both sides now fastened together, front end done, ready for the engine mounting. So that's going to be the next part. So with that, I'll say goodbye and see you next time on Modeling Misadventures. Thank you.